All right, so I'm Atlas, and this is Story Mode Gaming. We're Hi, guys. Do, yeah, we're going to be doing a tutorial uh, for the Warriors speed running. Uh, just a bunch of little tricks here and there, uh, pausing it when there needs to be some insight, something that needs to be said, and, uh, and whatnot. So first thing's the profile creation. You make the profile whatever you want. You need to show... Uh, you need to show yourself creating the profile and picking the difficulty. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's that's pretty much that. Uh, here you could see as soon as we get into the game, I'm gonna pause it and change the video setting to widescreen. You don't have to do this. Uh, this is just like your time to switch your options if you want to turn your music off. If you want to make it widescreen, if you want to turn your music off so your uh, YouTube stream doesn't get muted or demonetized or whatever, uh, you have the option to do it there and not lose any time. Um, not lose any time from that. And so timer starts right here. Uh, as soon as you hit X to select your profile, uh, that's when you hit your timer. So the, the first load screen is counted. Well, all load screens are counted, but... Uh, we count that time as well. Okay, yeah, so first, the first thing that you'll do when you get into the speed run after the time has started on. is start skipping the cutscenes. Um, the best way to skip them is to hold the pause button and spam X. That doesn't work for every single cutscene, but there's only a couple where it doesn't really work. Right now, what you'll see is Atlas just going through the tutorial. Um, this is just uh, showing you how to fight and whatnot. Uh, there is a couple of tricks here that we can show you to make it a little bit quicker but for the majority of it you just have to basically watch what you're doing like here um, if you start holding L1 down before the prompt uh, shows up then it makes it a little bit quicker and um, the next trick is in these combos at the very end when uh, you grab hold of Rudy it'll ask you to do a square X combo if instead you do a square X then XX it'll skip the next tutorial bit and go straight into the cutscene. Rudy will go on the next four and he'll progress further. Um, for this part, just press R1 to block and that makes it a little bit easier sometimes to get the elbows out. After that, you chuck the hobos around. Um, for me, it's not uh, really hard. For me, those snaps, I like to change where my camera's at and uh, rotate it just a little bit. And you have to reset your stick back to neutral each time. So it's like you hold back and press square, he hits it once, you gotta reset your stick back to neutral and do it again. That's like the easiest way for me, because a lot of people like just get like moving punches and they don't really understand why. Yeah. You gotta you gotta make sure you're getting like the, the snap just right. And I probably should have paused when I said that. We don't forget. Uh, I don't, don't worry about it. Really need to be too far because I feel like there was something here. Uh, a, a lot's happening at once. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, once you throw the, once once you do that, you you throw the bums and then you get your weapon tutorial. Um, let's talk about quick swing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you pick up a weapon and you, from my understanding, you hold block, so you would hold R1, and then you would hold forward, and then you press square to swing, and then as you're doing that, you start holding left or right, and then you just start spamming square. And for whatever reason, it causes uh, Rembrandt's, well, any any character's uh, swinging animation to reset, so you'll you'll see it a couple times here. In this tutorial, you have to hit... Uh, you have to hit one square bat, one square hit with the bat, and then one X hit with the bat. And so, as soon as you hit the first square hit, uh, I start spamming X to try to. You could land two bat hits on the same person. Yeah, it so, just needs to. This, yeah. this uh, the bat swing, the bat swing uh, strat is probably best used on gangs like the Turnbull ACs, the Satan's Mothers, um, the. Lieutenants of the Furies and Cobb and thing and people like that and the punks because they don't fall over to your attacks. Yeah. So you uh, can, you can get a real good combo going even if if there's a group of them around you you can take maybe four down with a couple of swings. Yeah. The um the orphans on 
real heavy rep too at the beginning uh once they run away from you they all kind of huddle up in a group and you could do this yeah. uh quick swings and you can half health like two or three of them because you can it's like a it's like a swing attack you know it can hit yeah. multiple enemies at once um so yeah after you after you hit your square and x uh baseball bats here you know uh it'll tell you to do a couple more so just keep swinging whatever ones you want and then clean on tell you to build your rage meter this is important uh just important gameplay wise the fastest way to build rage is to hold r1 and then press square and then x and just do it over and over again you'll see me do it right here look at my rage full and this it's not really that fast uh in this specific scenario but to build rage that's what you do it builds way quicker than anything else in the game the only thing quicker is maybe uh Throwing enemies into items like tables or drum sets, stuff like that. Yeah, like you'll see on the like you'll see on the AC's bar fight in uh, Boys in Blue. There's a nice little drum set that can instant rage you if you throw them through it. And this part here is um, just to practice your fighting skills. It's just timed. You don't really have to do anything if you don't want to. As you can see, Atlas is just standing there because you can't die, and it doesn't change anything. It's just a timed event. Yeah, um, that rage tutorial, once you do it, you activate your rage, you do a standing move, <clears throat> and then you wait for the text, you, you grab somebody, wait for the text box to disappear, and then you do a grapple rage finisher, and then you kill the bums, and then, and then you're done. So not, not a whole lot going on uh, towards the end. Oh, this is the uh, this is the time to take your break, even though the run's just started. Yeah, it's one of the only breaks you'll get. Yeah. Uh, so right here, you jump through the store, grab three. Uh, as you see there, he, he, as he jumped, he angled himself and landed on the glass pane to try and smash that as well, so he doesn't have to punch or jump again afterwards. He just has to jump, land, and start grabbing items. Right. Yeah, um, I like to make the joke about this game. Uh, it has an upgraded item called Steel Toe Boots, and it is quite literal in this game. Jumping is one of like the strongest moves in this game. It is very good. Yeah, uh, not just for its utility, but My even in combat. Is, that's the hard shit. Yeah. Yeah, I can stun enemies that would would otherwise have just grabbed you and stabbed you raw. Hit you with some some other sort of weapon, which can do damage and effects. That's another thing you need to watch out for certain particular enemies in this game because some enemies will wreck you fast. Right. Okay. Uh, this is an interesting thing to note. Um, if you restart your console, it, you get this thing that I like to call first first time RNG, which it's a thing. Uh, there's text strings mentioning it in the game memory. Uh, every time you restart your console and start up, start up this mission, as long as it's your first time doing this mugging tutorial, the mugging will always be up and then up left, like a hundred percent of the time. And this happens in a bunch of different places in the game. Uh, I think this one is just specific because it's there's a tutorial. But a lot of voice lines and I don't know, just behavior. It, like the walk if you play it multiple times, if you yeah, play if through it multiple times, you're gonna like hear a bunch of like. Uh, if you, you, you play like through like it hours. multiple times, uh, it changes. But the first time you boot it up, it's like usually the same. It's yeah, the war commands do the same thing. So what I usually do if I'm if I'm if I'm midway through a run. And I have to restart the run, I'll normally put my war command up to let's move it just to make number two faster instead of having to get the war command up, you just have to spam R2 until it yeah, appears. I do that uh, a couple times, we'll show it off in the next level. Yeah. For sure, because I do it a lot in the next level. Um, this part of the tutorial, you just follow Vermin. Uh, when you come over this wall, I kind of go far, uh, far diagonally. But personally, I like to just go left 
uh, and it'll make vermin like walk closer to the dumpster. Saves like a little bit of time. See so, yeah. how sometimes he'll get on the side of the dumpster and then he'll shimmy back to the center of the dumpster and then he'll climb up. And then sometimes he'll go on the side of the dumpster. But it seems like if you stand like in that general direction, he'll always just beeline it straight straight to it. Yeah. <laughs> Not Poe. Uh, <laughs> I've only seen a tiny bit of this game from uh, when you're practicing something like that pre painting section or something. Get to that later. <laughs> yep. Uh, that level's called All So yeah. Um, and it's very terrible. More just platforming. You can jump on top of this platform right here and uh, jump over the fence. But personally, I like to played a little riskier and just try to jump diagonally over like that just be careful if you do the riskier way because you can get it's caught on that very corner of the event yeah. and it will just slow your momentum down and make you fall yeah <clears throat> here's a little spot here with the dealer and um, you have to be very specific but as you can see there it's restarted for atlas now he doesn't have to see the dealer and he has two flat what he's done is he's Purchase the flash, and as soon as it started appearing in his inventory, he's punched the dealer, which has restarted it. But because the flash is already in his inventory now, it keeps it. Yeah, so you could see um, as soon as the 40 text appears on screen, before this even starts counting down, uh, I get the two flash. And what this does is, uh, yeah, there's usually like a big text box here saying, hey, use the flash, and you gotta wait for it to go away. But if you punch the guy, the text box never pops up, so it saves a couple seconds to punch him. Yeah, this is where you'd split where it's where the auto saving comes up at the top after the black screen, just before the loading title comes in. That's where I usually split on my splits. But um, it seems that everybody has their own particular time where they like to split. Some split as soon as they lose control on a level. Others wait until they've gained control on the new level. It just depends on your preference. All the, the, the splitting itself only matters if you want it to, do it to for your own time and benefits because we'll accept the run if it doesn't have splits on is the very first split and the very end one just for you, just to time it out. Everything yeah. else is meaningless. It can go wherever you want it to. Yeah. Um, the I'm almost positive the world record of this game right now doesn't even have splits on screen, so it does not matter. We'll, we're we're going to be the ones to time it. <clears throat> But, um, yeah, I like to do individual level timer. So you'll see as soon as the screen goes black and I lose control of Rembrandt, I'm splitting. Right, so this mission here introduces us to the other warriors, the uh, rest of the gang. Mm -hmm. Another tutorial mission. But at least this one... It's Come on, let's go not as boring. boring. You're not it, the, like the game's not teaching you how to fight. It's still I'm just like moving from one point to another. On the screen, it just popped up saying, "Let's move it." They are war commands. Let's go. Sorry, they are war commands. They are very, very important towards the speed run in particular spots. Um, so you want to get comfortable and used to using these war commands because you will need them in a lot of different areas for a lot of different reasons. Yeah, we're going to go over most of them here uh, besides get my back and scatter. And we can talk about those ones once we get to them. Okay, man, yeah, I have better examples later. All right, so nothing... No really tricks in this level. I think there's just uh, command command buffering and uh, uncuffing uncuffing on the tutorial oh, for uncuffing. Yep. It tells you to spam between L1 and R1. If you hold one of the buttons and quickly spam the other button, it makes the bar go up a lot quicker and a lot easier. For example, I usually hold L1 and spam R1 rather than spamming both buttons. Yep, you'll see me do it there. I'm just holding L1. I wish I had the input viewer on for this round, but oh well. I'm just holding L1 right here and I'm just going to tap R1 three times. 
If they stand like right on top of them, you can't hook that. Yeah, and you could hear past me say it. Uh, if if the warriors stand right on top of uh, right on top of the warriors, it makes it kind of hard to to free them. Yeah. Here, I'm not sure if I've set it up or not, but the war commands that we had up earlier, um, <clears throat> at this point, the game wants you to use a war command called hold up. You can pick hold up before it's before it's used, because once you step into this red marker, everybody over there is going to move towards you. Uh, so that makes it so you don't have to mess around with the right stick. You just have to spam the button to activate the war command to like recommand it. So I... Um, I'm not sure if I set it up on here or not, but I'll just be spamming uh, right trigger. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you can see I set it up right there. Ooh, sorry for that. Uh, you can see the next war command that we're going to use after this one is going to be mayhem, which is the top left one. And you can see that as I walk up the stair, I can I uh, select a mayhem. So that way, the next time we have to use one, uh, I just have to spam the right trigger. I don't have to. I don't have to like spend time uh, redirecting. Redirecting, yeah. That section, don't know why. Sometimes the marker just instantly spawns in the right spot, and sometimes it spawns way off, and it's stupid. And it's it's nothing to do with the angle that you come at it either. We've I've already we've we've, we've done all sorts of testing on it. It's just RNG based. Right. Uh, so, yeah, like I said here, I'm just spamming right trigger, so it's the frame I'm able to move uh, it activates. As soon as you activate Mayhem, you're able to move again. You actually don't have to break anything here. So what you want to do is instantly just let's go. So the Warriors are right behind you and not messing with that cop car. Because if you hit Mayhem, they want to they wanna destroy that cop car, and they're not next to you. You want to get them into this store and then Mayhem, so that they're stealing all this stuff. And it'll make this, uh, it'll usually make that yellow marker spawn really quickly. And did, and as, as Atlas ran into the store there, can you go back a second? As he ran into the store, as you'll see, he sort of jumped into the counter. He hit the glass counter that held the flash and the counter that was holding the items and he, and he hit the edge of it so he smashed both at the same time. That's just a quicker strat that we use in a lot of cabinets when they're right next to each other just to make life a little simpler rather than smashing each individual one we can get two at a time. Yeah, um, you'll see sometimes I'll also do uh, what I like to call the super punch. It's like when you're moving sideways and do a slow punch. Uh, it just breaks everything in one hit. So these cabinets on the left side, you could break them in one hit. These ones on the right side, you usually have to take like three hits to, to break. But if you do a super punch, you could hit both of these at the same time. There we go. Both cabinets smashed. And then he runs over to here and very quickly the marker appears and he just starts going, back, going out the other side of the store. This makes the run a bit quicker because instead of waiting around to trash the cop car and give you the next objective that doesn't that objective doesn't actually matter like Atlas said it's just a quick thing to show you how how the mayhem works basically <clears throat> so just run through uh run through the back alley and you're almost done with this mission here uh, is one of the cutscenes that I do not hold start on because more often than not the game pauses. Uh, instead, yeah. I just spam X, like just try to spam it crazy, and usually it'll it'll skip the cutscene. Uh, you could see earlier I don't I wasn't really paying attention when, but I uh, did another command buffer. So as soon as <laughs> as soon as I was able to move, I just started spamming right trigger. Keep a pause here a second. Just under Vermin's feet, I don't know if you guys can see it properly. There is a pipe. Yeah, there's a pipe right, um, right here. I would recommend I would recommend grabbing that at the very start. If you just turn to the right and press triangle, you don't even have to move over the top of it. You'll just move and grab it. You have to be quick with it though, because Vermin will if you don't. Yeah, that's that's the thing too. I think if you don't command buffer, I think Vermin gets it like a hundred percent of the time. Maybe I I can't remember if they're stuck standing still. They might just be stuck standing still, but you could see as soon as as soon as the command pops up, Vermin's like, "Oh, it's time to move." 
and so he's already ready to grab it. This run's kind of old, so it's not going to be doing everything that we talk about, but we're still going to talk about it, and um, maybe maybe put a video of it in uh, somewhere. Yeah. Uh, this fight, pretty basic. Uh, destroyers are pretty weak. I guess um, Cleon's not the best character for this, but uh, you can see I build up the rage pretty quick, and then rage is usually the quickest way to kill people. At least on Sucker, the, the two quickest way to kill people is wall smashes and uh, rage finishers. Everybody okay? uh, I wouldn't use Cleon's uh, actual rage finisher. He's one of the characters I would advise against using his Rage Finisher itself. When you go into Rage, I would smash people up against the walls or just dive on top of them and punch with the X with the square button, sorry. Because you yeah. can wrap it, you can quickly punch them pretty fast and you do increase damage in Rage. Yeah, but I think the thing about uh, Rage too is I think it causes enemies to fall down quicker. Yeah. So depending on who you're fighting, it like if you're fighting a boss, it's really good. But if you're fighting just like a normal soldier, uh, it, it usually makes it more difficult than not. Yeah, especially when they're the weaker ones, and the destroyers um, are pretty weak in in terms of guns because they do go down pretty easily. I would say, um, if you do happen to use Cleon's rage finishers, uh, his non-rage finisher is like. It's all right. It's pretty quick, but his rage finisher only hit the first two hits and then stop, stop spamming the button because the third hit always does slow motion and it takes forever, and half the time it doesn't even hit. So you really just want yeah. that second hit. You could see here. Uh, once I know that there's only a couple destroyers left, I start spamming uh, wreck them all. Usually, Cleon's supposed to play a scripted voice line, but if you interrupt it with a command dialogue. It'll cancel it out. So you'll see the screen is just going to turn black instead of play the the dialogue. And so it saves it saves a second and a half, two seconds. Then you just skip these cutscenes and we get onto payback, which is yeah. a, another tutorial mission, but it's a, a bit different from the other tutorial missions because this one is where the RNG and things start. Uh, Come into play. Yeah, I like to call this the the first real level. This yeah. level and the next level, yeah. they're like tutorials, but not really. It's just like not tutorial like based around points, this one gimmick. Uh, this gimmick is teaching you how to tag, but I mean, it's not. The whole level just revolves around tagging. Not so much a tutorial. Yep, the fun mechanic of tagging. Say something and then it fades to black, it just fades to black. I don't mind it on this mission as soon as it's like or any of the other missions besides all city, just fade it to black. As soon as it's like, uh, you could see as soon as I'm done tagging, I try to punch. Uh, it is possible to fall off of that building with a punch, like if you're if you get enough momentum. Somebody told, I think it might have been Blake. A. He said, I don't know why speedrunners don't do this, and he kind of just dove off the side of it. And I still haven't been able to do that, so I don't know. Just fade it to black. But usually, I mean, you can punch off that. So there's like, there's a couple points like that, but not very often. Uh, there, you can see again, uh, I guess it's not really a command buffer, because I was using it. I was, well, kind of. I was using it last, uh, last level. The command that you hold from last level, it also carries into the next one. So as soon as you press right trigger, it picks the last command that you had active uh, last time. So I have it set to wreck them all, and I'll just spam it as soon as uh, as soon as I can. And then some part in this, this is, level, uh, oh, so sorry, in this level you've got two tags in the first area, three tags in the second area, and three tags in the third area before you move on to the back streets. So what Atlas is doing here is stealing a radio. He already starts this mission off with $15. If he steals this radio, he gets $30, which you can go to the dealer, and which is just over there. It's the man with the green circle above his head. Um, he'll buy six sprays off him, which will get him through the first two areas, no problem. 
there can be a bit of RNG with this as your warriors fight the destroyers because sometimes the destroyers will drop five dollars. If two separate destroyers get wrecked throughout the first two, um, the first streets and then the alleyways, um, and drop five dollars each, you don't have to steal a second radio in the, in the third area. You just have to go straight to the dealer and get two more sprays, and then you have enough to finish off the level. Yep, it's pretty lucky, but it's worth it. I wonder if you're if it would be worth uh, trying to trigger a knife off that dealer, because then you all don't. You, excuse me. I don't know, because you got to. No, I'm tripping. Because uh, yeah, you'd get your money back, so you wouldn't have to steal the other thing, and it might be faster than stealing a car radio. Okay, so you know the way this ones. works, if you are, I don't know if you could see my mouse on Discord, but I have it on the recording. Yeah. If you were in this center area uh, for longer than like a second, these destroyers will start walking towards you. It doesn't matter if you're right here or right there. Uh, if you're in this area too long, they start walking towards you. So what you can do is you could just beeline it straight here. Have the warriors wait behind this fence. If they go too far, they're going to get spotted. But if you go quick enough... Uh, they won't see you. Their AI is really, really bad. There's a lot of bad AI in this game. Yes. Not just the enemies either. Okay. Um, you can kind of see them. I'll, I'll turn back to where they spawned. Because you can kind of see them back here too. So, as soon as you're like halfway done... Damn, it's text box. Uh, as soon as you're like halfway done with this tag, uh, two destroyers spawn and they start, they either walk out from this way and start walking towards you, or they walk this way and they continue walking that way. Uh, that's the better RNG because then they will, they also won't see you. All right, this is good. What? And as I said, these AIs are really bad. You can stand like right here and they still won't see you. Even though the voice line plays, uh, it it doesn't it doesn't matter. Their AI doesn't activate so far. The time to beat is one forty five oh five. The good thing about this mission as well is all of the tags for the start, the, the mandatory ones anyway, they all appear on the minimap as you're going through the level so you don't have to worry about locations or getting lost. But as you'll note notice once Atlas finishes this tag, the other two Yellow W's will disappear, and a red W will appear somewhere else. Because now they are just a bonus objective, not an actual main objective. Yeah, so if you are doing 100%, you gotta like know where they all are. You gotta... 100% 100% guide coming soon, guys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, there... Uh, I pick wreck them all because usually, usually they'll start fighting with the destroyers, but they ram right past them. I just need to be you just don't care. Uh, you want to have them on let's go. Just any command to bring them closer to you, because after you're past this fence, you'll be out of range if they're not next to you. Uh, I guess I tried. To, I guess I tried to grab a destroyer and throw them away so I could get get it, but it might have been faster just to not. Yeah, what I was about to say was this was bad air, this was bad RNG because the destroyers appeared right in front of them and like running past the destroyers and things like that isn't really the issue. The the big issue is when you're doing when you're stealing car radios and doing tags and things like that, you can't get interrupted. You have to be able to complete it in one go, otherwise you yeah. have to start again. So yeah. it's better to have them away from there at that point, but you can't really control which way they go, because usually they just hop that fence that was at the side of where the last tag Atlas did was, then climb back over it and walk towards the gate. It's just inevitable. You either have to deal with them at the second tag, or you have to deal with them at the gate. Yeah. Near the radio. Uh, you could see that this run is kind of outdated. I'm still doing this route. Um, usually what I would do nowadays, uh, once I get to, I don't know, like, this section, maybe a little before, like as soon as 
forget that we're in a video. I could just rewind so it. Far. <laughs> uh, usually, like around five, here, five. is all uh, command wreck them all. So that way they get closer, they get loud. The warriors, the destroyers that are on this side, will uh, run over there. And like I said, as long as they're in this general area, you can make them um, make them follow you, and that's that's really like what you want. You want them in this area, uh, fighting the destroyers. Right, another thing as well that I've just thought about that we haven't even mentioned, and there's been a few of them, is markers that you go through. On this game, there is quite a few markers where you just have to need one person, but there is a few that needs an entire war party. Right. So you don't want to get too that. far away from your warriors like Atlas commanded them to wreck them all so they came closer to him because if they were out of range by the time he finished the tags in the next area then he would have to run back on himself to get them to finish to get to, to progress onto the next part of the mission. Is that true? I, I know that's true for uh, for a lot of markers in general. I'm not 100% sure if it is with this one or not. The next one you the next one you hit you need a full war party. Okay. Not this one, but the next one. You know, yeah. after you've done these three tags now. I just need to be Yeah, so, so, when so this one the, so they don't need to be right next to you and it's a red oh. marker and then later first one, yeah, the first one of the runs coming up, all all of the markers so far have only needed one person. Yeah, uh, you'll see at the end of this next section. Um, that it'll be different. I'll probably have to end up waiting a second or two. This is a pretty old route. Um, I don't do this tag anymore. So what I would do is uh, I would buy off this spray dealer and run straight into this uh, this alley right here and run straight through the house party. Then, so once you're straight through the house party, it would basically look like this. Uh, this is such a weird section. I've oops, I don't know why I'm skipping forward. You just run forward and hit this tag right here. I've never had this yeah. Happen, really. And then jump across to the rooftop, and there's two ex the two last tags is on there. The good way about the good thing about this route that Atlas is take that Atlas is speaking about is the final tag is right next to where the red marker is going to appear. Yeah, it's on this one so too. But an um, important thing there. Usually. As a, sorry, sorry guys. Go um. Usually there's a tag right here on the other side of this, so you would jump over from this building and hit that one. That would be, so the the one that I hit just before this one, uh, this one, that would be your first tag. This one on this building would be your second tag, and then you would jump back over to this building, and then this would be your third tag. So an important note about commands again, as Atlas ran past the destroyers there, he hit wreck them all. And that's so the warriors don't follow them down to the next tag because if the warriors jump down, the destroyers jump down afterwards, and it's a total mess, and it's a lot harder for him to get the tag done. But when he starts the tag and gets halfway through it, he then commands, "Let's go," because by the time the warriors get to him, he'll be finished the tag and ready to move on. Yeah, um, I like to uh, command it on like. Right in this area, usually right when you go up that ramp uh, is usually when I'll do it. Because if I wait until I'm down here and then hit wreck them all, it's like it's more than likely one of them will try to chase me down here. It looks like two of them are already fighting some other destroyers though, so I must have got really crap RNG in this one. But yeah, you'll see um, when I'm about halfway through the tag, I'll say let's go and attempt to get them to, to hurry up and get closer. I want them to stop fighting. And uh, apparently, if you do watch my back, it's like the equivalent of let's go. It's kind of like switching up their commands. Uh, I seem to find that they run, they run to you with more urgency on let's and, and watch my back. Right. I'm not sure if that is the case, but it's, it feels like they come to you quicker. <laughs> we gotta open up the, the Blake A table and check their speeds. What was that? Yeah. Um, what a rare oh yeah, yeah. So here's uh, one of the markers we're talking about. Red marker, nearly identical to the one earlier. But once you get to it, uh, you probably won't see it because I have these. Let's, I'm just spamming commands. But the game says you can't leave anybody in your war party behind, and this happens because uh, 
one of them isn't with me. And fun fact, if for whatever reason one of them fall out of the map and the game deletes them, uh, the game will crash when you try to go into a red marker. So this this serves as the stealth tutorial for the warriors because the warriors has stealth sections, believe it or not. Um, so you'll see here. From, oh, god! Apart from this section here, I don't believe you'll ever use stealth again in this game. Um. In speed run. Yeah, is I think there's like a mm -hmm. couple parts where you run into some shadows, but never to the point where it's like, oh, I gotta hide from the enemy. Like never. And unless the game explicitly tells you to, like on, uh, I think Scout's Honor has one section where it's like you have to be in the shadow for X amount of seconds or something like that. And that's a yeah. bonus mission, so for the most part, it won't apply to you unless you're doing all missions. Um, So while there is stealth in this game, there's no uh, footstep sound in this game. So you can just sprint right up to the sky. Uh, you could see as soon as I get close to him, you could see... Uh, the tutorial on screen press l1 to lock on your victim l1 makes rembrandt put his hand up like this and then um square x will kill the guy and it kills him in one hit so if you can get a stealth kill you know it's worth it because it's it's a one one hit it's probably the fastest way but it's so so difficult to get one uh you can see Oops, sorry. Good. And I said it's tedious to line someone up for a execution unless it's been set up on a mission. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm going to do uh, the cutscene skip. skip on this one, because I don't know. This run's kind of old. But you could see as I go into this cut, uh, into this shadow, like after you pass this line, or even like this line, the game waits a second and then it triggers a cutscene. Uh, you could hold a, you could pick up a bottle right here, just to, it saves like a second instead of having to pick it up, uh, right here. Don't try to hit the man with a bottle, like, like, as Atlas has done there, and threw the brick straight at him rather than into the... The game's telling Atlas to throw a brick or a bottle into where the, re where the yellow marker is, so they want him to chuck it into the garbage, but rather Atlas throws it at the person's face. If you try to do this early to make it a bit quicker, you will fail the mission because he he will rat you out whilst it's showing you this tutorial. He'll yeah. call for backup and it'll fail the mission. Yeah, even if he's alerted, uh, the cutscene's unskippable. And this, as soon as you get in here, uh, the cut the tutorial wants you to throw a brick over here, but it wants you to hold L1 and throw a brick. But if you're just like, no, I'm not going to do that. You just hold towards the guy and hold X, and you'll just throw the brick directly to him instead. This is a weird camera angle, but it works. Um, yeah. So, nowadays, what you would do is you would... Before this, you would set up a, a hold-up command buffer. And as soon as you hit this guy in the face, you would start spamming uh, hold-up run into this garbage bag uh not not pressing sprint just run into it forward and it'll it'll break it'll cause the guy who's in this section to come up here and run this way and be like oh what was that and he'll run directly past you and you don't even got to worry about him and what you'll do is you'll hit this guy in the face and then you'll get in the shadow like this and you'll line up insta kill just like that so it would it would look exactly like this, but uh, the guy from down there would uh, the guy from down there would walk up there, and that cutscene wouldn't play, and you could just run down here freely. Uh, like we said before, the AI sight in this game is not very good, so you can kind of just walk past this guy. Yeah, you need to stay on them. Rewind it back a second. Right. Pause. On those pallets. My bad. Yeah. It's all good. These pallets here, you can't go past the edge of that pallet. If you go past the edge, the destroyer will see you. So where Atlas has run there is fine, but if you'd went a little too far to the right, he would have spotted you. That's where the limit is for that. This is the end of 
here back and you just have to get three tags on here um and then this, this is the tutorial the saying oh you got different shapes now not everything is just yeah. going to be a w there you go. Yeah, oh, just so we finished this mission, we'll be going back to the hangout for the first time. Yep. Okay. It's just it just serves as the game's hub where you go back to after missions and whatnot. Um there's a little tutorial in it the first time that's unskippable where you just slowly walk through and it shows you all of the different features. Um you can skip this little part. Usually, uh, the game wants you to walk Cleon, watch Cleon walk through the door, but you could skip it, and he like teleports a couple feet. Just a tiny time save. Yeah. On any percent, you're only going for the yellow missions that appear yep. in the hangout. That's how you progress. You don't bother with going outside to Corny or going into any of the purple markers that appear around the hangout. Just focus for any percent. Just focus on the yellow markers. For all missions, there's five separate flashback missions that will appear in between the map and the TV set where I'm showing you here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Them missions. It'll, it'll be obvious to you that there'll be a giant purple marker. Yeah, them, them five missions are included in the all missions category, but we'll get to that much later on after yeah. we've finished all of the any percent and we'll tell you where you'll insert them missions because. You want to do them missions before you finish the game, but we'll yeah. tell you where later. That's that's not important. Just for now, you just need to focus on the yellow missions. Right. Um. So you can activate this yellow marker from kind of a couple steps away, but it'll make you, it'll like lock you into like a walking animation. So you could save a second or two if you stand directly into the marker. So, uh, <laughs> sorry, you could see it. Uh. Like you can activate it right here. I take a, a step, just a little step forward. If you're standing directly in the marker, you save that much time. Like however much time it would take Cleon to walk to that marker. Uh, you save that, obviously. So like Atlas um, said before, this is kind of, it's not, but it is sort of kind of like our last tutorial mission for the run. Um, this one introduces Robin Shops, like it, it, it just expands on Robin Shops, cars, and just generally destruction of property. Because there is quite a few different things on the game that are destructible. Mainly things like cars and bins and stuff like that, but there is also other things that you can track. And this game serves as that sort of tutorial to say you can do this. So you can see here, uh, I'm gonna do the super punch that I was talking about a couple levels ago. Just bam, right, right through uh, the cash register and the thing. One hit. Uh, I th think there too. Usually that takes three hits to open. You could open it with one doing that. As you can see, so, there, it's not, it's nothing happened. Yeah, unless you like target them and grab them and do power moves on them. If you hit your AI once or twice, they're not going to care. Uh, this is my route uh, for this. I think it's the fastest. It gets you a lot of money. It gives you a little bit of destruction. There's faster ways to get destruction, but I like to make sure that before I leave this area, <clears throat> this shop and the next shop, I want to make sure I have three hundred and five dollars. Like that's my that's my safety. And you'll see why in a minute why he wants only that, even though you need 350. Yeah, so that's more than enough. So, like I said, sometimes uh, it is overkill. You don't have to get everything in there, but I like to be safe about it. I'd rather have safe money than being short. You could do a, a, a tackle like this into this cutscene. It'll move you like a couple feet closer. Uh, to the car, which is what you want. There's a lot of weapons are laid around on the floor, usually they're right next to cars as well, so you might want to pick them up. 
things like the thing you the things about weapons in this game as well is if you pick up a stick and hit someone with it three times it'll it'll break but you can destroy several cars with that same stick and it'll not break at all yeah and so just because it's a weak weapon don't worry about it you can still use it and it'll still work and you're not gonna it's not gonna smash on you quick yeah like it would do in combat so the game has just given me the uh objective three car radios there's no radios in the area before so you don't really have to worry about it but that's um that's why i want 305 dollars for this mission the objectives is 350 dollars three car radios and uh a destruction meter and the three car radios count towards the 305 dollars or the 350 dollars goal so yeah i like to pick up the stick and then go on this side and destroy those garbage cans because if you're if you're swinging right here as vermin and those garbage cans are still there uh he will target the garbage cans instead and then this i'm doing quick swing but i'm doing it with the uh, x button but it's essentially the same thing where you're holding one direction and then you switch the direction completely and sometimes you get quick swings. It seems to be a little bit more, uh, a little harder to do on like non non players or not non players uh, like props and shit. Rather, it seems like when you do it on enemies, it's pretty consistent. Yeah. So what he's doing here is he's just following the route to yeah. the next ra car radio. Um, I know we're not talking a lot about directions in this uh, tutorial, but if you need any help with the actual route that we take in itself, just rewind back and watch it through a couple of times. Um, what we're trying to, what, what our purpose for this tutorial is, is to help with more of the little time saves that build up over time. All the little tip bits that'll help you gain all of them minutes and get a really good run. Right. So, here so, Atlas is just finishing off the last the last car radio and also the last bit of destruction. Yeah, so you can see uh, by the time you're finished with that car, you want to be pretty close to the end. Uh, preferably enough that you only have to hit the cop car once. But yeah, uh, as far as routing goes, the reason I come over here is this is where the second car radio is. It's silly that the game tells you to get three, and the game also only spawns three, so... There's no leeway in that objective. So if you have really good destruction beforehand, usually as soon as you break these car windows, uh, that'll be it. It'll say objective complete, and then all, the only thing you have left to do is steal this. That'll, that'll boost you up to 350. So you can see one or two hits on the cop car, and uh, you're ready to go. If you have um, if you have the full destruction meter already, you can have the warriors scatter, and they'll usually scatter right next to the yellow marker. So they're standing right there with no chance of like cops or any anything getting them. This fight here, once you get through the mark, you'll see a bunch of furies. Um, they they're just completely avoidable. There's, there's a lot of objectives in this game that you just don't have to do. Yeah. It, the, you don't realise you don't have to do them, but there's a lot of different objectives that you just can completely and utterly ignore. Well, they're not even objectives, it's just the game implies that you need to do this or do that, and you simply don't. Yeah. So, that's the marker we were talking about earlier. That's the, the flashback mission, there's bonuses. If you know you're doing an all mission uh, speed run, you could do them whenever you want. Like there's, you, yeah, you could do them whenever you want, pretty much. Yeah, no. The only, uh, the only, uh, the only condition on what order you do them in is unlocking them, of course. All right. Yeah. Uh, apart I, from that, you can, you can do them whatever order. I mean, like me and Atlas usually do. I don't. Atlas usually does them after. If I get like a good. The uh, all city, all city. Like, but what I usually do. On solo, if I'm doing a solo run, I'll do them after all city. But if I'm doing a co-op run, I'll usually do them as the unlock. Better if I don't lose any time here. 
I don't know why, it's just the way we, we do things. Yeah. Uh, Same as if you do one of the miscellaneous categories like flashback percent, you can do that. That's one of the only categories you can do in any order. All the rest of them are mission and lock based. Yeah, flashback has flashback is cool. I like flashback. Um, so here I just command buffer uh, wreck them all. There's a pipe right there. Grab it every time for sure. Uh, this is like the quick swing thing that we were talking about earlier, where sometimes the enemies will group up. You can see that uh, I just hit both those enemies one one swing, hit both of them once, and then I hit Ash in the back of the head, so that counts as one. Uh, in Sucker, I, I like to use wall smashes right here, especially for the orphans, they're pretty weak. It's uh, one wall smash and two kicks will kill them. Uh, I'm spamming take them apart, that's another um, voice line skip. It's like, I think that one's a little bit longer, it's like two seconds or so. Cleon says, like, uh, now you understand, and a whole bunch of other stuff. You can see right here, uh, I got kind of lucky. My my rage bar is almost close to being full. Usually if you run through this area, uh, it'll cool down by the time the next fight starts. But since I hit that bum, it, like, jumped back up. So it saved, it, like, reset the timer on it. So I'll like almost be a rage finisher by the time this ends. I think I'm like just just low. Yeah. And then uh like we said, throwing people into items is like the best way to get uh rage in this game. Besides like the square X. Those are like the two ways for sure. Yeah, and there's a lot of weapons laid around this fighting area as well, like pipes and sticks that yeah. Do work do work very well on Sucker. Um if you're playing a harder difficulty like Furies, for example, I would uh, recommend you grab every single weapon you come across, even if it's a brick. I believe on Furies mode you can take down some of the harder enemies like the train cops from Old City with a glass bottle just smashing it and then slashing them twice does the trick. That's pretty good to know. I'm probably gonna use that later. <laughs> Cause that's where it all yeah. went wrong for me. That's how much that's how much high damage you do on uh, Furies mode. So for Furies mode runs, I would recommend grabbing every item you possibly can. Yeah, for uh, the most boxes. for the most part, if you're playing Furies mode, the route will be the same. But there are a couple sections where it's like very weapons based, especially when it comes to fighting. You're like you want to switch up your fighting style completely. You want to do things that give you items. Uh, or give you weapons. Just anything like that. But for the most part, you know, all the objectives, all the route, everything is pretty much the same. I got no money for the bum. So after that second fight scene, what happened there was Atlas chased after Jesse. He comes out, and in the cutscene, he's like one of the lieutenants for the orphans gang, and. He runs away from the warriors because it's all obviously we've just beat up all of his crew. Um and Cleon interrogates him to find out where the hangout is, so he can find the leader. Um this mechanic of interrogating lieutenants isn't gonna be seen again in the speed run on an any percent. There's yeah. not another interrogation at all. Um you only have to mug two two people and you the first one was in New Blood and this is the second one. If you yeah. do all missions, there will be a couple of more instances, but for this category, any percent, this is this is it. Yeah, and if you do all missions, you skip a lot of them too, um, with a glitch that makes it like almost instant, so you don't actually have to play the mini game. You still have to complete the objective, but you don't have to play the mini game. Um, here, I just like control the way that I sprint, just like. Hold left trigger, let off. Hold left trigger, let off. Just back and forth, and usually it'll get you right to him. Got no money for All right, there's a. This part's very, very important. 
if you have a dollar, you have to give it to the bum, or else you get bad luck for the rest of the run. Bum. So don't yes. forget that. If you have a dollar at that point, you must give that bum a dollar. Well said. That is one of the most important strats in the game. That's why I like 100%. I have several different good luck hobos. <laughs> and they all get a dollar. One of them on a uh, sharp dress man gets two. He gets one on me way past both times. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, here, I've, I've started picking up this weapon because, like I said, weapons are pretty good. Uh, in Sucker, they're, they're really good, but in Fury, they're like essential. So. In Sucker, I'm more of a wall smash kind of guy. Yeah, they, these are good. What what Atlas has just done there was really good as well. That's comboing with one of your warriors that that deals a lot of damage. So I, I wouldn't I wouldn't suggest trying to grab hold of them yourself and line it up. But if you see one of your fellow warriors, one of the AIs, and he has hold of the gang member, where, like he stood behind the gang member, he's holding them to you. I would turn around and combo him with them. Because even the harder guns, it does a lot of damage. Okay. Uh, this is kind of interesting to note because we don't really talk about it or pay attention to it much. But some enemies have uh, their health set up where you can hit them with three perfect combos. Usually anywhere from one to three perfect combos and it's just enough to kill them. Uh, you'll see on these orphans, you could do triple square twice and then uh, square square X once and it kills any orphan on sucker. Yeah. So, so it's uh, it's useful, but then at the same time, I'm more of a, a wall smash guy. I think that's the fastest way. It's very useful on um, paying the cost on harder difficulties to know... Uh, what and what attacks kill which enemies on what difficulties yeah i agree that's uh that's a very important point point. and there is different combos that you use in different missions it's the same as diff the different characters as well so as you get more you more and more used to it you will be able to sort of establish which fighting style you're going to use where whether it be you're grabbing all the people, slamming the heads off the walls at particular points, and then doing the square X to build rage at other points, or other things in between. Um, like, for example, on Encore, I do a lot of... I hold the block button, I hold the analog stick to the, the left stick to the, to the left, and I'll spam the square, the three hit square combo, and that does quick damage. It doesn't do a lot of damage, but usually you're surrounded by five, six high hats at a time, so you can just quick recession, knock them back, and then by the time you've knocked all six back, the first one's back at you. Right. Uh, this is like a small, very small time save. I think I might be like one of the only people who does it. Uh, so you want to go to the red marker. It's one of the red markers that you need all your warriors next to you uh, to continue. You get really, really close to the wall and hit hold up, they'll stand on the other side of the red marker, like on the other side of this wall. And so that means you don't have to wait for them to run up the block and turn the corner. And, uh, yeah, it saves, like, maybe, like, I don't even know, something small, probably less than a second, but I like to do it. I'll do it for the most part, unless there's a bunch of orphans right there. This next section is, uh... I'm messing up. I'm trying to. I always mess this one up. Uh, you want to get them to mayhem. Uh, this one you just have to destroy Soli's car. That's like the, the objective. The only annoying part about this is the orphans will come over and try and fight you, and if they hit you or get close enough to you, Cleon will target the orphans rather than the car. Yeah, it's annoying, but. Yeah, if you if you not let too go crazy of the trigger, objective. if you let go of the run button, so back to the hangout again. Yeah. Um. um the hangout spawns. Won't... But if you're holding oh, your run button while you do it, you don't. Yeah, I was going to say certain missions won't bring you back to the hangout and bring you straight back into the next mission, but, but whether you 
right there's only a couple of instances that in the game of that. Yeah, um, for, I think there's one two-part mission, and then the movie missions, you don't come back to the hangout at all, if I'm remembering right. Yeah. Those are the only ones. And I guess the first three missions, but that's pre-hangout. Yeah. Um. So there's four, five different spawns that you could spawn in, in the hangout yeah. at the beginning of each mission. So one is down here. This is... I don't know. I would say it's not the worst spawn. Because a lot of the missions, they take place know, just right up like here. Yeah, I was uh, going to say that's like, that's like the third best... No, the, either the third or the second best spawn. For me, I would say this door, and then there's one on this left side. Uh, yeah. Those are the best ones. The one that I just spawned in, that one's okay. This one down here, there's one like right underneath this like little ramp area horrible spawn worst spawn ever yes. the worst if, you, one. If, if you spawn there uh in 100 percent, you just want to turn right back outside and complete the bonus missions <laughs> not if uh because like, you, have, you, have, you have to wait until a certain point so you can do all of them in, at once huh? i use i use that opportunity you know when we're in co-op 100 i use that opportunity to start with the workout here uh. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, try to make the best of your time down there. Yeah, definitely. If, you, if you're down there anyway, you might as well do them. And at some point or another, you're going to have to jump over the railing and go down for them. So if you spawn there, I just crack off whatever I'm at. And then just that it's just we lose a bit of time on that mission and gain a bit on the workout. Right. Um, so, yeah, that's the worst spawn down there, because for any percent, you, you don't want that spawn. This spawn up here is pretty bad, too, but I would say... It's just a little bit worse than the one that I just got because yeah. it's like at the same distance between here and like the main hangout. But for the most part, the missions are going to take place in this area. I think there's one mission that takes place over here. Yes. Yeah, because even, yeah, yeah, definitely. Whether you hold it or let go. I was going to say because even in course, this, the cutscene takes place over in that corner, but the mission marker itself is at the radio, isn't it? Yeah. And then for hangout uh, or for flashbacks, you want to get door obviously closest to the flashbacks there's one that's like right next to it you have to walk three feet and you're at a mission so here you want to run into the shadow and get stealth mode as soon as you get into the shadow hold l1 so you start doing like the stealth walk and even though the flash dealer is like looking at you i guess i'm doing it too much frame by frame but even if the flash dealer is like looking at you as long as you're behind them uh you kill him and get your flash Right, so what is what you do is just uh, finish these three tags up before we start the next mission. Um, at the end of these three tags is probably the best cutscene skip of all of them, because yeah. there's like five cutscenes that plays out one after another, and if you hold start down and spam X, it it takes a couple of seconds, but it's a lot quicker than actually watching all the cutscenes through. You'll see here. He'll skip it. Um, the game will seem like it's trying to stutter. Almost time to jam. It. Nothing will happen, and then it'll start auto saving. Yeah, usually uh, plays that cutscene. Then it plays a cutscene of Rembrandt walking on the street, finding a poster. Then it plays a cutscene of you at the hangout talking to the other warriors. Then it plays a cutscene of you at the train station. And you'll see. Um, you'll see here. Uh, so skip that cutscene. I'm holding start, pressing X. You could hear a humming noise, meaning you know the next cutscene is waiting to start. Well, time to jam out. Just spamming through it, and then you could hear the train like screech for like just a second. So it's just spamming through all the cutscenes uh, before they show up. Usually, if you want to skip a cutscene, you have to wait for um, wait for it to start playing first. Like you have to wait for like the screen to fade in, and then you could skip it. But doing that, you don't have to wait for any of the fade ins. So on the way to this cool. red marker, it's very important. You can't hit any gang members whatsoever; it will instantly fail you. Yeah, I don't. I, can what about the civ right there? You can get the civilian. There's also another one in the that spawns in the um. Brain station when you first when you first take control you can beat him up and the flash dealer at the co at the end you can beat him up as well it's literally just gang members right. 
So yeah, this this mission is pretty straightforward. I just have the warriors scatter. Uh, I like to stand right here because I guess it's it's like the closest in between two or th in between three of the spawn points. Yeah, and it helps. It, it seems to be more if if you stand in the particular spot like you were stood there. It seems to be more common that it spawns like that. For the third, for the, like your third spray that you, well, the second spray you collect, but your third spray that goes into the inventory. Yeah. So, um, I usually have the warriors scatter the entire time, but after the last paint spawns, I have them follow me. And so that way they'll get kind of in the way where there's a spray spawn and then I'll have them hold up. So now they'll just stand here and be annoying. So if anybody goes that way, and sees them, they'll want to attack them. Uh, if the spray spawns over there, uh, they'll be very annoying because they'll just stand there in the way and not even fight back. <laughs> so it's like they're constantly trying to get attacked and the enemies just fall off because there's not enough room for them. But yeah, this section is really straightforward. Um, you just have to tag and not get attacked. I want to say yeah, the only the only tag that you can be almost done with, and then if a random enemy attacks you with, and you have to uh, get another spray, is the, this one. Yeah, yeah, I think that's all right. Um, so, like, say you get hit with a random bottle right now, you have to go get another spray bottle. <laughs> yeah, that's that's so annoying. Yeah, that hasn't happened to us per se on writer's block very often, but it's happened a lot on. All city. Well, this is so, my smoke break too. <laughs> yeah. So what what what's happening here is the elevator is being called. It, the, a timer starts ticking down for thirty one seconds, and instead of doing anything, you can just wait. It's probably best to do what Atlas has just done here because the more bodies on screen, the slower the game runs. It might not be as it's not as bad on the emulator, but on the PlayStation 4 version. And um, if you turn around and look at the hi hats in that in that moment, like the entire group, as you can see, a few of them there. If you turn around at the beginning and see all of them, then the game just goes into slow motion. Yeah, you could see it um, a little bit here too. Uh, once my camera turns around, you could see it like frame drop for sure. <coughs> <laughs> Right, so once the cutscene hits, um, you do the start, skip again. Um, what hap what's, what you're doing here is he's throwing it at the red marker. Now Atlas threw it twice there, and it only it only took damage the first time because you're not allowed to hit it whilst it's still shaking. Yeah. When you throw it the first time, it starts shaking. Now you have to wait till it ends. But yeah, I, th I threw it too early there. And, uh, it yeah, didn't do any damage. Taking damage. But you'll see between uh, this one and the next one how long they weigh it. Yeah. Went straight out that cutscene. And this is just one of the typical chase scenes that you'll get through the game. There's not a lot of them, but there's just the cameras, the camera angles locked. Um. And you just have to run. Don't try and fight the high hats. They have. Uh, this is one of the occasions where they have. I don't know if it's they have extra health as well, but you certainly take a hell of a lot more damage in this moment than you normally would. It takes about five punches, maybe six, and then you're dead. Yeah. Oh, I kind of forgot about that. It's been so long since I've tried to fight the high hats here. We well, use all our advantage in the co-op run because the this, this screen's split and it's, you can only see half the screen so player 2 would usually aggro the hi-hats right at the start and get killed as quickly as possible because if you get killed in that way the game will let the, pl the player 1 continue but if the player 2 just jumps off the roof for instance there's no way player 1 can go back and save them so it fails you. Gotcha, that makes sense. Um. I forgot to mention, because I'm not doing it uh, 
in this run because this run is kind of old. There's a trick where, okay, you run up to you run up to something and you're about to climb it, right? If you tap tap square or X right here, uh, you will instantly like teleport on top of it, and it's faster than climbing, but like it doesn't save too much time, so it's like. If you don't do it, it's not like you're not going to get a world record or anything like that. But uh, it does save, uh, I don't know, I don't even want to say half a second, but it saves time here and there. Yeah. That adds up over the course of a, an hour and 50 minute run. All for sure. That's but what I all these tips and tricks will do. They'll, do. they'll not. They'll not save you. All these little tips that we're giving you won't save you masses of time in your run. But they'll add up. They'll, yeah. they'll add from seconds into minutes. The more and more strats that you employ, they'll add up and add up and add up, and you'll just see your time drop slowly but surely. This section is kind of random. Um, usually, I will do a command buffer and have them scatter at the beginning. Oh, I didn't actually. Yeah, I just, <laughs> it's been so long since I've done it properly. So yeah, I'll do scatter and it'll make the warriors kind of run to this section and then you want them to mayhem because then now they're next to all the paintings. They didn't go for it, but usually they'll go for this table right here too. And it'll, uh, it does a decent amount of damage to the de gallery. And we'll move on to the uh, statues, the paintings. It, it prompts you to tag the paintings when you go near them, but that does do damage, but it's very slow. Yeah. So if you're going for 100%, maybe do that, but for any yeah. percent, I would just trash the paintings with paint. Yeah, and because in 100% in you also have to uh, go for uh, point bonus as well. So it's it's worth going for spray painting uh, for the most part. Right, as you can see there, just as the timer disappeared, just as it disappeared, there was two ten left on the clock. Um, you want to be aiming for when you first started. You want to be aiming for like one minute and thirty left on the clock at least. So it says mimes two ten. You want, when you first started out, you wanted to be about one thirty, and then as you get better, the timer will go up and you'll get quicker. But you don't want to be letting the timer tick down too much, so just get straight onto the smashing. Yeah, uh, this was another th uh, example of uh, timing, at least for like individual levels. Like I said, I I split on individual level timing is when you uh, you lose control of your character. You can see, even though the screen is fading, I still have control until right now. As soon as snow sta snow stands still, uh, I don't have control anymore. Or that's when I know I don't have control anymore, rather. Okay, and we're off to the, uh, back off to the hangout now for the next mission. Yep. Holy shit. And we gotta uh, take a break. Yeah, you ready? Yeah. Right, take a break. Be back on this.